Hi there. Today, we'll be building a keyboard for one of my dear friends, who just so happens to be one of the biggest weebs I know. Recently, he evolved from a regular weeb and became a VTuber. So, when he commissioned me to build him a keyboard, it was only natural to theme the build around his VTuber, Marcus Negosia. Marcus is a mage who specializes in manipulating space, and he's particularly a fan of portals. So, the 60% resin case from Alopal was a perfect choice. It straight up looks like a dark blue portal, matching his color scheme perfectly. For the PCB, Marcus said he preferred the 64 key 60% layout, which includes arrow keys. So he went with the MJ64 Hotswap PCB from Melageek. Before mounting this PCB in the case, be sure that the switch on the back is set to APP mode. DFU mode is mostly for nerds. For the plate, I went with brass, for the sole reason that it's basically gold colored. It also adds a nice heft to this build for that extra premium feel. I also added KBD fans and module foam to the plate because I fear that the brass plate and tray mount combination would lead to a very pingy board otherwise. For stabilizers, I went with the tried and true Durag V2s, lubed with Crytox 205 grade 0 on the housings and XHT BDZ on the wires. I also Epsi modded these stabilizers by placing leftovers from KBD fan stabilizer pads inside the stem. When doing this mod, it's very important to get the stab pad as close to the beginning of the slant part of the stem as possible. It's also very important to avoid any overhang past the edge of the stem as it can lead to the stab pad rubbing against the stabilizer housing, which can cause an annoying scratch or ticking sound. I also applied trimmed KBD fan stab pads to just the spacebar stabilizer. For switches, I went with these cute purple Gadron Hippos from Kinetic Labs. They feature an unwiped stem, a full nylon housing, and the ever beloved Gadron Yellow 63.5 gram slow spring. Overall, this switch is just about as smooth as a Gatron Inc. V2 when lubed, and it has a very nice sound signature in my opinion. I'd highly recommend this switch, especially at its 52 cent price point. For this build, I lubed these up with Crytox 25 Grade Zero, and added Desky's gasket films. Finally, for keycaps, I went with PBT Purple Blue and White. The purple and blue fit right into Marcus's color scheme, and the Katakana sub-legends are the cherry on top, as this build is for one of the biggest weebs I know. During my first build of this keyboard, I found that the case sounded a bit hollow and pingy, even with the plate foam. I didn't bother doing a sound test of this build because it sounded so hollow. So I ended up buying some polyfill to fill the empty space. It also acts as a sort of smoke effect, similar to the smoke that surrounds Marcus and his avatar. Another great feature is that it's one of the only filling options that allows for RGB underglow. Another good option would have been to do a silicone pour. Before padding the case, I made sure to seal up this hole to prevent any filling from escaping. I also added some double-sided tape to the high-density foam from the PCB box and placed it below the spacebar keycap. As you can see, I initially compressed the polyfill a lot, and although it did remove the pinginess, it pretty much sucked the life out of the board's sound completely. Here's a sound test with the super compressed polyfill. Yeah, not super desirable in terms of sound, at least to me. The polyfill was actually so compressed, 
that you might have been able to see that it caused the PCB and plate to bubble up around the middle. Another thing you might have noticed was that the spacebar was flipped. I could not for the life of me remove the taking from the spacebar stabilizer, even after hours of tuning. As it turns out, the spacebar keycap was warped. I'm honestly not sure why I didn't test that sooner. Flipping it solved the problem for now, but I still wanted to fix the warp. So I tried doing the classic hot water fix. After a few failed attempts, I finally got it to set in a somewhat good place. Setting it in cold water after the hot water fix seemed to help a lot. For the next build, I made sure to remove enough polyfill such that the PCB and plate didn't bubble anymore. This build sounded a lot better, and with the newly fixed spacebar, I was able to do the sound test in the normal configuration. Wow, this keyboard almost sounds like a chocolate bar ASMR video. And these hippos are a joy to type on. Overall, I'm very happy with how this build turned out, and I hope Marcus feels the same way. Tune into one of his streams if you get the chance, and also be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching until the end, even if you just skipped to the sound test. Catch you guys in the next video.